Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So Microsoft is now also rolling out our optional bug fix release update for Windows 11, 22H2 and version 23H2 for March 2024, KB5035942. And the update started rolling out late yesterday in my region on the 26th of March. And this is more or less the same update I posted on a week ago when it was still in preview in the release preview channel and now has made its way to the stable channel. Now the big one with this update is it brings the fifth wave of new features. And by the way, just on a side note, the update is optional unless you have this up, this toggle turned on. Get the latest updates as soon as they're available. If you have this turned on, as you may well know by now, something to take note of, the update will be downloaded and installed automatically. Now as mentioned, this update brings the fifth wave of new features now to all users if you have that toggle turned on. And the update is exactly the same KB number as the actual configuration update that brings Moment 5 to Windows 11, KB5035942, which is also rolled out on the same date. And this is because Moment 5 has been rolling out progressively over the last month or two. And this now, if you do decide to install this update, will install Moment 5 by default now for all users. So just something to, else to take note of. Now, if you want more information regarding new features and what's new with Moment 5, the playlist for Moment 5 will be in the end screen of this video. There's a lot of content in there. If this is the first time you are seeing Moment 5 and um, some or all of the features, go check that playlist out if you want more information. Now, also just to let you know regarding Moment 5, there is one new feature and three improvements that have rolled out as part of Moment 5 that weren't there originally. So I'm just going to go through these first um this one new feature and these three improvements at first which are now part of moment five that didn't roll out um with the original rollout phase of moment five and the first new feature is the update adds more content to your lock screen and this is also rolling out for windows 10 but just take note this feature might not be available to all users because microsoft microsoft says it is rolling out gradually and i haven't received it yet on both windows 10 and windows 11 but this image will give us a good example as more or less what to expect. And here we can see it adds more content to your lock screen. So over and above the weather, you get your sports traffic and finance cards and widgets that are now part of the lock screen. And just something also to be aware of is if you enable weather, it enables all four cards. So because of that, some, including myself, kind of consider it to be bloat because if Microsoft did give us the option to enable each card individually, I think that would be a better move. But nonetheless, uh, if you head to your if you head to your settings, your uh, personalization page and your lock screen, you'll see this is where you can enable the weather. And if you enable weather, if that feature is rolling out to you because it is controlled, as mentioned, you'll see all of those cards and not just the weather so something to be aware of so adds more content to your lock screen that's the new feature that wasn't there as part of moment five originally now just to mention the improvements as part of moment five that weren't available at the get-go the update addresses an issue that affects the settings app it stops responding when you use it to remove bluetooth devices the update addresses an issue that affects usb audio it fails on some processes. This occurs after you pause, play, or resume from sleep. And the third improvement rolling out as part of Moment 5 is the up update addresses an issue that affects the combined taskbar buttons and hard labels setting, which can be accessed by heading back to our personalization. You can also do this by right-clicking on your taskbar, Head into our taskbar settings and yeah, you'll see taskbar behaviors and yeah, combine taskbar buttons and hard labels. Where Microsoft says the app labels in the taskbar sometimes do not have the correct length, which cuts off the label text. Uh, this occurs with when the setting is set to when taskbar is full or set to never. So that's a fix now. That's part of moment five that was not there originally. So some little things just to take note of regarding Moment 5. So now with Moment 5 out of the way, it's time to focus on the actual update, KB5035942, which is this month's optional bug fix C release update. 
Now, we actually get three new features that are part of the bug fix update. And the first two are mostly focused at IT admins in corporations and enterprises, but I'm just going to mention them because they are new features. Um, the first rolled out to Windows 10 as well. The update affects Windows Hello for Business. IT admins can now use mobile device management, MDM, to turn off the prompt that appears when users sign into an Entra joined machine. And the next one is the update improves the remote desktop session host. You can now set up its clipboard redirection policy to work in a single direction from the local computer to the remote computer. You can also reverse that order. And then the third new feature, this also rolled out for Windows 10 this month. The update adds search highlights to the taskbar search box for the European economic area. So if you are in the EEA, you should also now start seeing this little animation to the right-hand side of your taskbar search. And by the way, if you don't want to see search highlights in your taskbar, you head to privacy and security, searching windows, sorry, privacy and security, search permissions, and yeah, you'll see show search highlights and you can toggle that animation off if you don't want to see it in your taskbar search box. So that's the third new feature now available to the EE. A. Now, if you want to stick around, this is a bug fix update, and I've just pulled a couple just to mention. There are plenty more, but I think you may be interested in these I've, I'm going to mention now. The update supports daylight saving time, DST changes in Greenland, Kazakhstan, and Samoa. The update addresses an issue that stops some apps and features from being available. This occurs after you upgrade to Windows 11. The update addresses an issue that affects certain neural processing units, NPUs. They do not show in Task Manager. And neural processing units, as you may well know by now, uh, is hardware that's needed to run most of the new AR features that Microsoft is going to push out with our annual Windows 11 24H2 feature update later this year. Now, if you want more information regarding 24H2, once again, playlist in the end screen. And I have also posted a video on how you can actually check to see if your computer includes a NPU, and that will also be in the end screen. Moving on, the update addresses an issue that affects the touch keyboard and the candidate window for the Japanese and Chinese input method editors, IME. They do not show after you come out of modern standby. And two more left to go. The update addresses an issue that affects Notepad. Apparently, it fails to print to certain internet printing protocol RPP printers when you use a print support app. And the update addresses an issue that affects Windows Defender Application Control, WDAC. It prevents a stop error, and that's important because a stop error is a blue screen of death. And there are a couple of others, but those are the basically the key highlights. And if you want to check the latest build upgrade after the update has been applied, we just head over to our search and type in Winver, which is the About Windows menu and dialog. And yeah, we can see for Windows 11 version 23H2, OS build is now sitting on 22631.3374. And if you are on version 22H2, that'll be 22621.3374. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.